Make that big boss less special It ain't no game, but they say I'm Welcome to the second level Internet and welcome back or welcome to Indie Please Add Details episode twenty eight. We're back. We're it's back. been uh, almost pro- pretty much a month. Yeah, it's been over a month so. actually. Because so should we come back? Four twenty was the last uh, Indie that we uploaded. It's true. So I mean, really, we were wrecked for the entire month. Yeah. it just took so long to get uh, back together. Also, we're on a new day. If you haven't noticed, obviously you're noticing because you're watching this. But mm. our schedule has changed. So because of just larger file sizes and I don't know, there's a new visual going on over here. Yes. It's uh, right. You'll, you, it'll take a little bit longer to edit. So, the new schedule is Thursday is Codename Morpheus, mm-hmm. Friday is this show, and do you please add details, and Saturday is going to be the official Level 2 podcast. While I usually recommend you watch every podcast, I highly recommend you watch this podcast, because we go over kind of where we've been, what's going on, and some of the changes that have that have happened yeah. or are happening yeah, yeah. that are going on. So, but this is Indie Please Add Details, the weekly dip in the world of indie games and indie developers. We will discuss the news and our indie excursions throughout the week, topping it all off with a topic of discussion that you can join in the comments down below. You can listen to listen to us on your favorite podcast services, Apple Podcasts, because not iTunes. I was told now? it's called Apple Podcasts. That's fancy. Google Play, Stitcher, SoundCloud, Same all those other. Faces or other places, or you can see our lovely faces if you go to level2gamers.com, which is the YouTube, which is additional game footage and our new layout. So if you're listening to this, head over to level2gamers.com, see the new layout because mm. it is kind of fanciful. At, uh, at very least, yeah. If you're an audio listener, first of all, thank you because because we know you, you haven't really got much updates. Yeah, we know that you don't, re- yeah, you don't get as much updates as the YouTube guys. Um, but also, uh, I think. It's at very worst take, worth taking a peek at the video version because there is a lot more there in terms of visuals, especially now. Um, but we, you know, if, if audio is the best way for you to consume this, then absolutely I continue do both. doing so. It depends on where I'm at. I usually do both too. Like I like to watch it back and make sure I didn't fuck anything up in editing. I'm just mostly. talking about po- podcast, not our podcast, but podcast I listen to. Yeah. I do both. Like Rob Paulson has one called uh, Talking Tunes, which I do both on. It's it's audio is fun because in the car, it's best place yeah, for me to listen. I usually if I but if I'm, I'm on the home. way to work and I got nothing to listen to, I'll listen to us. Yeah. usually. So, Not but if you want to continue the discussion online but off air, you can hit us up on Twitter at Love Two Gamers STL or Discord link in the description. Let's move in, Tom, to the Do new it. releases. Uh, rusty. I and on Xbox, you're you're rusty. I'm not. I'm ready. Did you see? I got through the intro, no problem. You nailed it pretty good. I, uh, I my voice might have cracked on the first attempt of <laughs> trying to do the intro, but that's fine. That's true. Uh, new games for Xbox for this week. What you got? Nothing really. I mean, there's nothing There's not a lot going on. Bird cakes. <laughs> After a picnic went horribly wrong, Pancake, the flying cupcake, will try to protect his girlfriend Cherry from hungry flies. Featuring randomly generated levels, colorful 2D art, tight shooting controls, and a fluid aerial movement mechanics, you'll be set for wacky flight through kitchen and beyond. If your girlfriend's named Cherry, you got bigger problems. That's a that's a good way to start uh, the new releases. <laughs> good old it's bird called cakes. bird cakes, but it's about a pancake. That can fly. Is that right? I think so. It says fluid well, the aerial person, movement mechanics. Well, Pancake is the person's is the name. Of the bird? After a picnic went horribly wrong, Pancake, the flying cupcake. <laughs> pancake the cupcake. <laughs> so Jesus fucking Christ. Yeah. Out now you can try start. it. Any you developers can, at their best. You can try bird cakes. Uh also out this week, Moonlighter. Hmm. This game actually looks pretty good. A set of ancient gates have been discovered near the small village of Ronoka. Ronoka? Ronoka that lead to different realms and dimensions, providing brave and reckless adventurers with treasures beyond measure in this ARPG with rogue light, L-I-T-E, not like, Mm L-I-K-E, elements. ARPG, is that, that's not. American RPG, I don't know. (laughs) No, it's usually an augmented thing. Like it's augmented reality, but that wouldn't work on an Xbox unless you have a connect or something, I suppose. Or maybe uh, amazing RPG. It could be. Could be amazing RPG. Sega Genesis Classics. This excites me. Over 50 titles across all genres from the all time classics like Sonic and Streets of Rage 2 to deep RPGs like Fantasy Star series. New features bring modern convenience to the classics. Save your game at any time, so save states. Rewind those slip ups. That's stupid. Or customize your controls and earn bragging rights with online multiplayer and achievements. I don't like the rewind thing because I don't think I'm so a, either. Yeah, I'm not the, the save states I'm a, I'm okay with as long like save states I'd be cool with if it's in between levels. But I hate when you put save states in levels because I feel like that's cheating. Yeah, I feel like you have to get to the end of the level. Yeah, but you should be able to save at the 
end of each or it should auto save at the yes. end of each level but like I guess unless it's like games like Fantasy Star and stuff Fantasy Star like a save wherever you are would be useful because it's uh, a big yeah. ass game but, yeah. um, well RPGs like to do that now look at Fallout exactly you can quick save. Um, but yeah if it's like a level based game like Streets of Rage or Sonic or Golden Axe or whatever although saying that like it'd be nice to have save states in Altered Beast just because that game is so fucking hard nope <laughs> um, save states are stupid you think so yep I don't I don't like them because the it's alternate all, emulators it's, of all these games have uh, save whenever I know. they want. So. That's that's the problem. It's it's altering the way the developer viewed the game to be played. Well, it's it's alternate. It's altering if you if you save the, within if you save within the level, it's altering how the game was made designed to be played. It's designed to be level based. Well, yeah. All right. See. I, I'm too tired to argue. Street Fighter 30th Anniversary Collection. Yeah. Celebrate 30 years of Street Fighter, the series that revitalized arcade culture and paved way for fighting games for fighting game for the fighting game genre. I can read. <laughs> this collection contains 12 arcade classics, including the iconic Street Fighter 2 and its highly competitive sequel, Street Fighter 3: Third Strike. I've never played Street Fighter game. Visit the game's Street comprehensive Street. museum and discover the vast history of the series. Listen to nostalgic tunes and learn more about the characters who have who have become known around the world. So for Street Fighter, did you like I've played Street Fighter one, believe it. I've never played any Street um, Fighter. I found an arcade with it in once and I couldn't believe it because I was like when I was a kid, <clears throat> Street Fighter Two was at the absolute like peak level. Like it just released uh, on home console. It was a smash hit in the arcades. It was around the same time as Mortal Kombat. Mortal Kombat came a little later. But um I remember finding like in this old ass fucking fairground thing in the middle of this ditzy little town in England, they had the original Street Fighter, which was fucking terrible. But I don't remember playing Street Fighter 3 ever. The third strike? Yeah, not at all. Clearly, you weren't competitive enough for it. No, Tom. I didn't. I, I like Street Fighter 2, but the thing with 2D fighters for me is that they always get boring too quickly. And I, I just, don't fight in games. Yeah, I don't like fighting games. I just, yeah. Some people are into them. Like, I have friends that are super uh, into them. They're deep. I mean, there's a deep mechanics to a lot of them, and you could tell why they're like eSport popular and everything, but um, I just, it's just not my thing. But I mean, it's cool that they're celebrating old games. 30th and anniversary. That's the second one in a row this week that's celebrating old games. So that's cool. New game. Yoku's Island Adventure. An ancient island deity is trapped in a restless sleep, and it's down to Yoku to traverse the island using a unique blend of pinball mechanics, platforming, and open-world exploration to flip and bump his way around the stunning hand-painted island. This game looks absolutely amazing. I don't know how I feel about the the pinball part of things, hmm. but it does add a unique twist to platforming. It definitely is an interesting mechanic. So it's, it's like Sonic. Yeah. My, remember the first time you played the casino level in Sonic? Yeah. And you had the pinball? You're like, oh, that make, fits perfectly. I have not played this, but everything I've seen says says it fits perfectly for that, where it's not like a huge thing of it, but it does add that. It's adds enough of a twist to make it unique. I mean, yeah. I mean, that's what you want out of your indie game. You want it to stand out a little bit. And if that's their mechanic, that's their mechanic. Good for them. Stay. When Quinn go away. wakes up, <laughs> when Quinn wakes up alone in a locked room with nothing but a computer hooked up to the internet, to an internet chat room in which you're present, which you're present, present, it's present and present, present, which you're. Quinn wakes up alone in a locked room with nothing but a computer hooked up to an internet chat room in which you are present. You're you present. become his single ray well, of hope. hope. Your choices will single-handedly shape his escape efforts or lead him down the path. To the all untimely end. That sounds dope. Yeah. It it's sounds, like a text based game. Do you remember that uh, game on the iPhone with the moon guy? Yeah. Like the space I dude? I still play it. Yeah. that's uh, That sounds a little bit like that. Like you have to There's save There's been a few of those that have come out, so I'm, ex I'm excited to yeah, see what's Yeah, it's unique. I like that. Die Valhalla. Die for Valhalla. Die for Valhalla. <laughs> I could read. Embark on quests that will lead you through strange lands where North, Norse mythology, perfect time to have this game released out of God, after God of War, collides with Lovecraftian mythos. Die for Valhalla is an ARPG where you hack, slash, and crush your enemies. Possess and take full, contr full control of heroes, monsters, and other things to help the Vikings save the realm. It just clicked in my head. It's action RPG. Yeah. It just clicked. Because I thought it was augmented reality because I've been no. looking at so much of that crap lately. Yeah, but no, yeah. it's not that. Yeah, it's action RPG. But yeah, I mean, fucking Vikings and Lovecraft, do it. I totally don't Norse. that. Yeah. Fox and Forests. That's Fox and Forests. Like Guns and Roses. Yeah. Fox <laughs> and Forests is a 16-bit 
a style action platformer with RPG and puzzle elements. Switch between seasons on the fly, shoot and slash with magical melee cross with with I'm assuming that's supposed to say with a magical melee crossbow. Mm. Collect valuable loot and unveil the mystery of the fifth season in this pixel art fable. The fifth season? You it, say? Yeah, it's called Smog. I've lived in California. <laughs> <laughs> God, there's quite a few of these. Still going. Knights of Pen and Paper Plus One Deluxe Deluxeier Edition. Deluxeier? Yeah. Wow. Take on the roles of in-game players taking on the roles of their care. Take on the roles of in-game players taking wow. on the roles of their characters in the traditional pen and paper RPG session in the ultimate meta role-playing experience. As both the playing characters and the game master, players can choose which battles to fight, which class to play, and which characters to control and take on loads of quests and monsters. So it's a game where you play, play a, a game. tabletop game. Yes. So you are playing Dungeons and Dragons in the game, and you are controlling, controlling the person in the game, but also controlling the game. people in the game in the game. Yes. Wow. I mean, that can, is meta. That's, that's can't argue with that. The Journey Down. Oh, this one. Chapter cool. 1. In the first chapter of the journey down, the, the search that. for lost for a lost journal leads to forgotten secrets of the mysterious un- underland. Follow Buana and Quito. I love those names. Buana. Buana and Quito. You guys are like, Sounds like a child trying to say banana. <laughs> I want Buana. As they puzzle their way forward and begin to uncover the true fate of their long lost father, Captain Kananada Dudu. Kanadodo. Kananadodo. <laughs> in this point and click adventure. <laughs> what the fuck? It's, K- it's K A O N A N D O D O. Kanadodo. 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 Wow. It's point and click, though, so that'll be fun. You can't get, me ma- get mad at me for mispronouncing no, that you one. You did great on that. That one. We got Zamb! Exclamation point. Redux. A mashup of twin stick shooter and tower defense. It's up to you and a friend with couch co op as space agents to exterminate hordes of bio mutants created by mad scientists. Mix and match turrets, powers, and traps to find your preferred playstyle from the close combat to long range destruction. It's yeah. a tower defense game. That's it sounds nice. generic. Not, not mad about it. Not, not great about it. Milan Noir. Milan Noir. Milan Noir. You gotta say it like it's French. Milan Noir. Oui, oui. Like your widow maker. Anyways. Oui, oui. <laughs> Someone wants you dead, and you must use all your toughness to survive. Shoot, choke, and sneak your way through enemies and engage with them in breathtaking car chases with the aesthetic inspired by Italian crime flicks of the 70s. Milan Noir is a pixel-packed action game set in a violent city of Milan, as you, which makes sense, I guess, for the name, as you hunt for the truth and escape and escape the ones who are chasing you through the unforgiving city. So put yourself at the dev table right now. You've just start, come up with this amazing idea of creating this Italian mm-hmm. game, right? And you're going, right, we're going to set it in Milan, right? And it's going to be a noir game. What do we call it, boys? <laughs> and someone goes, Milan noir. noir. Brilliant. Yeah, that's the one. That's fucking stupid. Earth Atlantis, a side-scrolling shooter with a monster hunting gameplay. You must search and hunt down dreadful sea monsters and explore the post-apocalyptic underworld of Earth Atlantis. Unlock multiple ships and special weapons and abilities for your journey and become a legendary hunter. Sea monsters, I'm down. Yeah, I don't like the art style. It's all right. It's, Nothing wrong with that. Yeah, it just it doesn't appear. It's too it's too drab. There's not enough it's color a going sketch. on. There's not enough I mean, that's one screenshot that yeah. we're looking at as we're discussing it. I mean, the, the viewers can see more of it. But yeah. It's, uh, I mean, sea monsters, man. Lickspear. Yes. Double Spear edition. Oh, wow. It's double Spear. Lickspear. And the land filled with penguin vikings, worst zombies, and hipster ice giants. <laughs> Survival is an art. So good. Fortunately, an ancient champion with elegant weapon has been summoned to please the gods and restore balance to the universe. Grab your Lickspear, light spear, and traverse lands straight out of the Germanic myths in the spear throwing arcade game. Let me game. just say this I've played this game a lot, and it was one of those games. Did you play the where... Double Spear Edition? I didn't play the Double Spear Edition, but uh, when I first played it, I was like, okay, this is like a mobile game. And it is like a mobile game. It is you just throwing javelins at different arcs and stuff. With uh, It's uh, it's not tower defense, I suppose, because you're only one guy, but it's just like a horde mode 2D mm-hmm. scroller where you have javelins to kill everything and some special abilities and stuff. But oh my god, is it a dick? Like, it's so fucking addictive. I would, like, be playing some AAA game and I'd be like, you know what, I really want to play Lickspear right now and I'd just whack it back on. I had a great time with it. I would fully recommend that game. Lickspear. And now it's double edition. Double Spear edition. Double Spear. Mining Rail. Hop in your minecart and drive at high speed along a railway track, getting through the mine to the exit and down to the valley. The track is steep, the curves are tight, and the forces will try to take your vehicle out of the out of the bend. A good pilot knows how to shift his weight, tilt the cart, and manage every tricky part of the track. 
the art doesn't look great, but this actually sounds like something I would enjoy because it reminds you me of Minecraft level. Enjoy this. Yeah. I hate everything about that. It just entire the, the art is not the art is not great. <laughs> You're in a minecart. That's all. That's all. Yeah, it's it a minecart level. It's, it's I know. It's a. It's one. It's, it's the a game level. that is a minecart level. Who likes minecart levels? I do. Right. This is my favorite level in Donkey Kong. You aside, who likes minecart levels? Not anyone. This one I'm actually super excited about. Oh sir. Oh sir. The Hollywood Roast plays one of them, uh, one of many famous, but for legal purposes slightly different pop culture icons, and, v- and verbally spar with other Hollywood el- elitists using a deep battle system. Oh sir. The Hollywood Roast is a spinoff of the surprise hit. Oh sir. The Insult Simulator. This time around, the game is taking Tinseltown down a few notches. I did not play the original. It's English. One. It looked okay, but I do like the idea of like rip off celebrities arguing with each other. But for so. legal reasons, they're slightly different. That's why I said rip off celebrities. Yeah, for legal reasons, I slightly would different. play it. I would totally play it. Um, yeah, maybe we should get on that and see if they'll give us a code. That is your roundup for Xbox. Xbox done. Moving on to PlayStation. PlayStation is going to have a lot of similar games, so I'm going to breeze through. For, I'm just going to say them if they are repeats. Let me talk about this one. Um, Agony, PS4, digital and retail. Agony is a first-person survival horror set in the depths of hell. You begin your journey as a tormented soul, remembering nothing from your past life. By exploring the hostile environment and interacting with other tormented souls, you'll soon understand that the only way to escape from hell is through the mystical red goddess. Right. So, Agony, right? One of the most disgusting games of all time in terms of gore and and violence and sexual violence and children's heads blowing up and all kinds of stuff i kickstarted it obviously <laughs> so i saw we one, like two different games i'm like I minecart took, you're like let's kill shit i took one look at it and i was like the most realistic depiction of hell and their when they did the kickstarter one of their stretch goals was vr i was like fuck yes like let's have the most realistic depiction of hell and in VR it's would be happening. amazing. They made the stretch goal. VR is happening. It's not happening at release, but it's something that they're going to work on as soon as this goes gold, which is now. You know, I've heard this before from a Kickstarter campaign. It was called Project Cars. True, but they've and already never tested happened. it in VR and it's working. And they just haven't got it ready for release yet. They've already tested it in I'm just uh, saying. Vive and Oculus. But they did That's say they'd That's not PSVR. Bring, they said they'd bring it to PSVR. So, um, and I'll, I'll bring that up on, uh, well, yesterday I, I brought it up. Uh, <laughs> shut up. So, anyway, Agony is like super hyper violent um and just bear that in mind if you're looking at it because it is not for the faint of heart it is like truly one of the most fucked up games uh that's been released in a really long time uh which has me super excited but here's the fun part because i kickstarted it they uh i kickstarted it at the level where you get to put a credit on there so level two gamers.com is in the credits for agony (laughs) So if you get to the end of the game, look for us because we're there because we kickstarted it. Well, I kickstarted you it. Kickstarted and I just it. put our, I put your name. I tied you the Christian's name to the worst fucking possible game <laughs> that I could think of. Uh, but it'll be, it'll be a good time. It's for everybody has their own style of it game. Some down. of us like minecart. Some of us like hell. If it goes down, some of us are going to hell. Some of us are going to heaven. <laughs> <to Minecart. laughs> if it goes down in history as like one of the worst games ever made, then we're on it. So yeah. I'm excited for that. Uh, VR game, I'm going to ignore that. Bird Cakes is also coming to PS4. Stupid-ass game. Ooh, just, just VR. Quite, a, quite a few VR. Die for Valhalla. Earth, Earth Atlantis, Atlantis is coming out. There you go. Gekido Kintaro's Revenge. Nice. A year Japanese has passed. Pronunciation done correctly. <laughs> a year That's has passed right. since the epic battle that has decided the fate of mankind and claimed the life of the beloved Angela. Dark Omens once again tell of the return and uh, return of an evil presence. Yushi is the last remaining master of the ancient Shinken, and he calls upon Tetsu- Tetsuo. I hate Japanese names because I can't pronounce them. Tetsuo. Tetsuo. You say it like one, almost one word, Tetsuo. His Tetsuo. disciple and adopted son to investigate some strange happenings in the faraway village outside the city. And Yushi would be Ushi because they don't say you. Ushi. They say U. Oh, dude, I know this was coming. <laughs> yeah. Harvest Moon Light of Hope Special Edition PS4 Retail and Vigil. In digital and in true PlayStation style, the paragraph is uh, looking for really a fresh longer. start and starting in new surroundings. You set off on a voyage to be in your new life. Done. I love <laughs> Har- I love Harvest Moon. Though. That's all you need to know. I mean, most people know what Harvest fucking Moon. Illusion, a tale of the mind, out six one. Illusion is a puzzle exploration game set in the ambiance of the early nineteen twenties Parisian cabaret. That's actually that sounds, sounds cool. right. I'd be all right with that. Journey down chapter one. It's gonna be there. Kabounce! Kabounce! Kabounce is a fast-paced multiplayer pinball game in which you control the ball. 
It actually could be a lot of fun. If it's done right, it could be a lot of fun. I need to look up trailers for this. A lot of pinball games. Uh, uh, Knights of Pen and Paper plus one Deluxier, du- Deluxier Edition, as we mentioned before. That's you know, the night I kind of want to fucking play that game now, just because it sounds so weird. It's You're welcome. Metal Slug 20, or XX, double X. It says double X. I'm guessing it's double X. One more X. It's going to get saucy. Metal Slug Double X, the most recent installment of the famous running gun action shooting series, re- returns to the battlefield with a plethora, or plethora, depending on how you say plethora. it. Plethora. 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 Brand new features. That was That's a, from a movie. Somebody would always oh, pronounce it? it plethora. I, t- I like that, actually. Mila Noir is coming Mila as well. Noir. So is Moonlighter. No heroes here. This Let's is actually on. one uh, I'm kind of excited for. Rally your friends and hold your ground. A co-op. For one to four players, coordination and cooperation are the key weapons to success, so we're going to fail. Everyone must play a role in the battles in the battles to come and work together as a team to protect the castles and kingdoms from in, in, imminent doom. Mm. It's a ca- it's a castle defense, but the art style looked really cool when I when I watched the trailer for it. I so. mean, I, anything that's co-op is, is usually worth a shot. Oh, sir, the Hollywood Roast is coming to PS4. Old Man's Journey. This is another one I was excited about. This looks like a PlayStation game. Old Man's Journey, a soul-searching adventure, tells the life, loss, and reconciliation, and hope. Entrenched in the beautiful, sun-kissed, and handcrafted world, embark on a heartfelt journey interwoven with light-hearted and pressure-free puzzle solving. This is one of those, like, walking... It reminds me a little bit of uh, Last Day of June type thing, where there's... there's there's, it's not very action packed, but the story is is what what gets it. it Owl Boy. This is another one. Owl Boy is a story driven plat- platform adventure game where you can fly, explore in a brand new world in the clouds. Owl Boy has a physical release too, so that's pretty good. For, uh, uh, retail only. Ah, there you go. PS4 retail. Just a retail release. Yep. That's weird. Uh, personality and Psychology Premium. I saw PS4 this. Digital. How weird is this? Read the description. Personality Psychology Premium app helps. It helps you getting an analysis of your personality, psychology score. That would be interesting. Right? Sega Distance Classics. Shift Quantum. This is new. Axiom Vertigo, the world's leading... Uh, <laughs> How close is that to Axiom Verge? Sorry, Kurt. Yeah. Is the world's leading authority and most trusted friend in the cerebral con- contentedness programming. Promises to deliver better life quality for everyone with a shift quantum program. Nice. Yeah. So it's Big Brother. Nailed it. Street Fighter 30th Anniversary Collection is coming. God, there's a lot of VR games. There is a lot. Oh, yeah. a lot of VR games. Yoki Island Express and then we get into music and videos and there's nothing cool there. There's a wrinkle in time and NBA Finals can be watched Tomb on Raider. PlayStation View. Tomb Raider's out. Tomb Raider's out. And that's the good Tomb Raider like the the younger Tomb Raider. You're the younger Tomb Raider. I, the Angela Jolie one. So that was, that was PlayStation. Let's move on to Switch. Mm. Cause we gotta we gotta pick it up here, cause, cause I might do rapid fire in the in the details today, cause we're we're we're, we're lagging a little bit. So Nintendo Switch for this week is gonna be Akka, Neo Geo. That's arcade classics. Uh, Neo Geo Ninja Combat. Boo. Defoliation looks like a Japanese game that Tom would like. Yep. Ten bucks. I see ten bucks. Johnny Turbo's arcade Joe and Max Caveman Ninja. Yay! Seven Joe bucks. Max. Dude, you ever play that? No. That's like a classic game, Joe and Mac. You never heard of it. Like Genesis style. Just Shapes and Beats. Doesn't have a price. Wow. Uh, Lost Sea. Ten bucks. Just Shapes and Beats. There's no price needed. It's just Shapes and Beats. Yeah. Pirate Plus. Four ninety nine. Pirate Pop Plus. Pirate Pop Plus. Sorry. Quantum Fighter K. Eight dollars. Quantum Fighter K. <laughs> Are those glasses working today, buddy? Smoke and Sacrifice. Nineteen dollars. West of Loathing, eleven dollars. That looks weird. That game is very interesting. A little stick man. Uh, and that's it for this week. And then next week is going to be fun. Hopefully, we're back next week to talk about some of these. Because every time I say that, we're never back the next week. So let's go into here because I know you want to know what defoliation is. Yeah. Based, based on Pick you. Pick a couple so I can show some video. So defoliation. Oh, that's, hello. That's a, <laughs> the very right first for picture tea. is some fucking knocked out blonde chick. Yeah, that's great. That's Japanese. Puzzle solving, Taiwan, adventure, right. suspense game set in Taiwan. There you go. The young characters was... and the old woman who met through an unfortunate accident may ha- not have had a good start, but they eventually open up, and the youngsters end up visiting the woman at her house as friends. <laughs> Uncle Tom's touchy basement, as everybody. France. <laughs> One day, when they're headed to the old woman's house as usual, they suddenly are hit by para- paramnesia? 
Paramnesia? I don't know what paramnesia is. What point to the when, word? When they, paramnesia. Paramnesia. They're about paramnesia. When they wake up, the woman's house looks different to what they knew. It's always that story. Under about. fear of being watched by someone, they begin their puzzle-solving journey for survival. What are the secrets behind the internal autumn leaves, the key to the game, and the missing schoolgirl? <laughs> Can these young characters make it through the game and make it back alive? Every fucking game. Single player, by the way, in case you're wondering. Someone passes out, wakes up, everything's different and horrible. Yes. Every every single one of those games. I like them, though, but I'm, you're not mad about it. The other one I wanted, Lost Sea, because Lost okay. Sea looked interesting to me. God. Well, apparently Nintendo wants my feedback. I'm going to ignore your feedback for now, Your Nintendo. feedback is shut up. Uh, rated E10. And do you have what it takes to escape the Lost Sea? No. After a freak storm over the Atlantic, you find yourself stranded on the shores of a mysterious island. Do you have what it takes to escape the Lost Sea? No. I feel like I just said that sentence. <laughs> Lost Sea is an action-adventure game set inside the Bermuda Triangle. Recruit a crew of survivors who can help you explore the hazardous islands as you hunt for the artifacts needed to navigate the Lost Sea. Features. Explore millions of procedurally generated islands. Mm. Encounter an array of deadly traps and dangerous critters. Mm. Recruit from a large cast of, strand of stranded with their own traits. Challenging gameplay. Permadeath for you and your crew. Mm. Unlock new player abilities and special moves. Discover useful items that help you survive. Buy valuable ship upgrades that will assist you in your journey. Doesn't sound terrible. That does it. I actually am That'd excited. Be good for handheld too, yeah. for sure. So the art style is is, is it's cartoony. Is but it's not bad. Not what I expected, but it yeah. I'd play it. There we go. See, this is why we click on these because there's things we're like, oh, that sounds good. So that's your that's your roundup Switch for the new roundup. releases. Yeah, and a uh, roundup. There's all yeah. There's a lot of games out this week. A lot mm. of games, and some of them good, some of them bad. What's that one? The pen plus paper plus one deluxe year edition. Deluxe year. <laughs> yeah. That's the one Tom's going for. So that's all of your new releases for the week. Now we get to do a special uh, segue because we're going to go away for a second and we'll be right back with your details. Now on to the details. Yay. Detail number one. Spin Tires, Mud Runner, unleashes the new Ridge DLC. You liked this, didn't you? It was alright. It was a fun game. It was it was a bit wonky physics wise, but mm. it was it it was not what I expected and I enjoyed it. But it was not what I expected. It was super realistic versus I thought it was gonna be super stupid arcadey style. Super stupid. Super stupid arcadey style. <laughs> Uh, Spin Tires Mud Runner is the ultimate off-road experience taking players on hostile roads and harsh environments. Available on PC and consoles. Spin Tires Mud Runner is releasing the Ridge DLC today, a free content update that includes a new map, new vehicles, and new add-ons to explore and experiment with. I love when it says new and free. The ridge is a coastal map split in half by mountain ridge. Players will need to take a lot of care if they're looking to cut time by traveling across the center. In addition to the brand new map, two new vehicles are being introduced. The D-538, a heavy-duty tractor, and the B-6A, a lightweight tractor. Yeah. You get to play tractors in this game? Yeah. This is just about, trucks. No, it's just about driving various different vehicles. Oh, okay. These two vehicles can be used on any map, provided you have enough progression points to unlock it. Com completing the ridge requires... What, you I don't have to buy a loot box? Yeah, no, right? I can just unlock it by yeah. playing the game? Yeah. God damn. Completing the ridge requires players to utilize a new type of delivery gameplay called scavenging. Logs are now scattered across the map and players will have to find them at various locations in the wild to complete deliveries and earn unlock points. Spin Tires Mud Runners offers incredible and incredible content and unique experiences as the genre of its own, reinventing the rules and offering new challenges for players looking for an emergent Wait, look yeah, looking for emerging encounters and true to life off roading situations. It's a very niche market. <laughs> Yeah. Dedicated players and driving enthusiasts will appreciate the hyper-realistic driving sensations thanks to an advanced physics engine, which I can say yes without a question that that is true, a differential transmission system, soft tire simulation, as well as realistic interactions between vegetation, mud, and vehicle. There's a very, 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 very small poop, <laughs> small poop, <laughs> small group of people that will love that. <laughs> You know what I mean? It seems yes. like it's, like you said, it's so niche. It's so, like... But the people who are going to love it are going to love it. The people that love it will super love it. But, like, everyone else is uh, just like, okay. Spin Tires' next free LD DLC, The Ridge, is now available on PS4, Xbox One, and Steam. Good for them, though, for releasing it free. So. And it's an indie game, so you know they're
they don't have a whole lot of resources. So to make it free and not to charge like five bucks or whatever for it, good for them, dude. Yes. <clears throat> Detail number two. Do it. Crying is not enough. Launch trailer reveals PC release date and console ports coming later this year. I like the look of this. Storyline team released a launch trailer for its upcoming third-person horror title, Crying is Not Enough. The single-player title is expected to launch on PC next month and then later ported to Xbox One and PS4. Protagonist Jacob Helton finds himself looking for a missing for his missing wife, for a missing wife, <laughs> for his <laughs> missing wife, wife yeah, <laughs> who mysteriously vanished once she, reco- once she recovered from a car accident. A mysterious woman appears informing Jacob that she knows where, her, where his wife is, which leads him to a strange location rich with puzzles to solve and enemies to kill. Oi, Jacob, I know where your missus is. Follow me. The crying <laughs> is not enough. Launch trailer introduces a large amount of gameplay footage showing off eerie locations, explosive weapons, and a strong Alan Wake vibe. I thought it was more Silent Hill than Alan Wake, but I guess the graphics were kind of Alan Wake-y. Crying is Not Enough is due to launch on PC on June 8th, 2018, and eventually be ported to PS4 and Xbox One on Q3, tw- or for Q3 2018. Do you think it's rare for like a game of this style to hit PC before hitting console? No, especially for indie developers, because most people <clears> develop <throat> on, nah, I suppose on it's PC. Indie, yeah, that makes sense. So, but, I mean, yeah, it looks it great. Looks good. Yeah, it it looks mean, like a Tom game. It's not a Keegan game. Not at all. Uh, I mean, the first impressions that I got from watching the trailer for it were immediately like you know old school resident evil old school silent hill it definitely more silent hill uh just based upon like the locales and things like that um super creepy monsters uh a little bit of evil within as well but like it's yeah i can see the alan wake elements here with like everything is dark and you use your torch for pretty, mm-hmm. your flashlight sorry for pretty much uh everything but um it, it won't have a scratch on alan wake alan wake was uh, you say that game. maybe this is the next Alan Wake. I, God, I wish there was a next Alan Wake. I you fucking love just that game. Give it time. You know what, Xbox, make a fucking Alan Wake. That's what you need. You need a new Alan Wake because that is an exclusive that would bring people. But I would buy that in a heartbeat if you did that. How do you know they're not? I don't know they're not. Exactly. I'm hoping at E3 they announce it. E3 predictions 2018. We didn't do that. We we were, I was gonna do that and then we were off a month and we don't have E3 is in like a week. It's whatever. Or two weeks. Yeah. Detail number two. Three. 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 <laughs> Detail number three. Yay. The third one. H1Z1 Battle Royale is one of the biggest games on PS4 right now. Remember when we said H1Z1 Battle Royale was blowing up? That's an understatement. The title, which attracted 1.5 million players in the first 24 hours on PS4, has just crossed 4.5 million players. It's taken the release around three to four, three to four days to get there. Is it active players though? I'll, I'll read. I'll read exactly from the H1Z1 uh, tweet here. Sure. PS4 open beta as a thank you to the 4.5 million of you who have joined us since launch. So it doesn't sound like it. Yeah. We've dropped the blue barbell Hellfire 4.6 right into your inventory. Plus, Duos is now unlocked with a brand new patch. See the latest bug fixes by clicking on the link. It's another indication why franchises like Call of Duty have decided to add a battle royale to the game, but it's also a reminder that Player Unknown's Battleground has really missed the mark on the world's most popular console. Look how hungry PS4 owners are for a title like this. Mm. That's a jab. Yeah, that's jab, a fucking jab, jab. jab as well. I, you know what? I haven't played this yet. I downloaded it. You downloaded it. I did. Uh, which is rare for you because it's a zombie game. It's free. Yeah. Um, I know what it is. I just. But I know. feel like. I don't think it'll take on Fortnite necessarily, but I, I can understand why their player base is huge because it's fucking mm-hmm. free. It's a free battle royale game, and right now that's the hottest genre out there in the world. And it's got zombies as well, and people just like, it's, you know, people are going to uh, lap that up. I, I, I'm i yet to play it, so I'm yet to judge it. I, I'm not going to be like, you know. Yeah, let's be honest. The reason PUBG has gotten as much crap as it has is because it's an unmitigated, te- it's an unmitigated technical failure yeah absolutely um i think they have a good idea i think they have a cool concept i think they they if they can get the technical side figured out which they haven't proved that they can that it's game would be good super depressing to me that they haven't fixed shit already because i know but they're adding like, more i feel like it's like, like the new map just came to xbox i feel like it's a lot easier that uh to do to fix things on a game like fortnite because honestly fortnite has less going on with it than PUBG does i mean you gotta be you gotta be fair here fortnite is like a cartoon style aesthetic it's a smaller island i am being and... fair i'm putting my time where I, the better game is that's fine um so. but like but there's a lot more going on in PUBG. it's just that they really haven't addressed it for the console owners especially considering that microsoft fucking published it for them you mm-hmm. know what i mean so it is it's sad that that has gone by the wayside a little bit but i don't know if, can they claw it back at this point 
I think they could. Have. They've not no man's guide it. No, so. no, they could, but they'd have to do some serious. I think te- the fact that it's still technically early access, I think, is what's saving it. And it's 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 better than it was. Like it's yeah. definitely better. I played it like relatively recently after a patch or two, and it definitely felt smoother. But it's still not there yet. It's still nowhere near uh, as good as it could be. As Fortnite. But they're still releasing it on fucking phones and stuff. Yeah. Detail number four. Road Redemption for Nintendo Switch is currently in the works. Cited. Last October, the spiritual successor to Road Rash, Road Redemption, made its way to PC, Mac, and Linux. It looks as though another platform will be added to the list after a confirmation of a Switch version is currently in development. Initially, the official Road Redemption Twitter account posted a tweet stating that the devs were working, were working on some exciting things for the game and they will announce more details soon. Twitter user at the real Ost, Ostist, real A W E S T, the real Ost, the real A West. Sure. Is Adam West? No, be cool. Adam West is dead. Did he die? Yeah, he's been dead for like a year, maybe mm. longer. <laughs> Followed up with a tweet that, with hopes of a Switch version, it took about a day. But the Road Redemption account replied back confirming that Switch is currently in the works. You're in luck. A Switch version is definitely in the works, so stay tuned. So if the Switch version is in the works, it's probably all consoles in the works but they're just replying specifically to this guy with the switch version um but i mean i fucking loved road rash as a kid so i don't know how good this game is though like i don't know what the reviews are or anything for those who may not know what road redemption is it's a vehicular combat game where you play as a biker and try to dispose of rival bikers bikers by any means necessary necessary that includes guns Bats, pipes, and more to limit the opposition. Guns. Back in 2013, Road Redemption was crowdfunded through Kickstarter after 4,409 backers pledged 173,000 to get the project started. It released on Steam in 2014 and was intended for full release the same year. Yeah, guns is weird. There was never any guns in Road Rush. It was always about melee. It was always like, get up next to the guy and chain whip him off their bike or whatever. Yeah. So that I'm not so... I don't want it to be like Wipeout. I want it to be like just you have to get up close and personal because that was half of the fun. Like, kicking people off the road and stuff. But, yeah, I mean, I'm excited. I'll play play. Road Rash is just a game I think I would enjoy. Road Redemption, sorry. Road Mm. Rash I would enjoy as well. Mm -hmm. Road Redemption I would enjoy. Yeah, Road Rash put hours into that game. Detail number five. PS4 Horror Survival, or Survival Horror Sun, gets first gameplay trailer. Is it Sun or is it S-O-N? S-O-N, Sun. A haunting new gameplay trailer for the PS4 exclusive title called Sun, S period, O period N arrived on PlayStation's YouTube channel yesterday. It's safe to say that it looks creepy and dark and seems to be the to feature a creature emerging from the shadows. Mm. Developed by Red G Studios, Sun is set within the modern day world in which players take control of a father, Robert Alderson, looking for his missing son, Jay. Jay's disappearance leads Robert to a forest in Pennsylvania, also known as South of Nowhere. From the gameplay trailer that was released, it doesn't seem like it does seem like it'll have a focus on walking around in in the dark a lot. It also looks as if there's going to be plenty of jump scares, judging by the way the creature comes at us. The official Sun website shows nothing but a countdown with the with the world will bleh, the world will know above it, mm. indicating that we will find out more details I about the title one time for. hit zero. A Twitter user asked developers if the title was going to be VR exclusive. Red G Studios have confirmed that the game is just a regular title. Boo. It doesn't make it a bad game. No, not every game has to be VR. Everything is more fun in VR. Not um, every, no. This type of I disagree is. with that. But uh, yeah, I mean, I, I saw the trailer. I was by the time this goes up, by the way, go to the good. go to their website because the I think the countdown is have ended. is getting pretty damn close. I'll cool. tell you as of recording, and re- again we record this on Tuesday. It's two. There's two dates. So by the time this is up. It will. You'll have more information. Yeah, it looks good. Um, it reminded me like a little bit of the Descent or something. The movie The Descent, like those creatures that you that they do actually showcase. Hello, random flying thing. Um, and uh, it definitely looks like the creep factor is well up there. So I'm I'm down to clown. I'll uh, I'll give it a shot for sure. Will you? Are yeah. you down to clown? I'm totally down to clown. Detail number six, and we all saw this coming. PUBG takes Fortnite to court. <laughs> Korean game developer PUBG, a subsidiary Bluehole, by the way, this is from Korean Times, a subsidiary Bluehole has filed a copyright violation against the U.S.-based Epic Games, asking a court to determine whether it, the, the latter's Fortnite was copied from the former's PUBG PlayerUnknown's Battlegrounds. 
A PUBG official said Friday that the firm has filed an injunction allegedly copyright infringement with the Seoul Central District Court against Epic Games Korea. We filed the suit to protect our copyright in January, said the official. Released in July of last year, Fortnite was a first-person shooter game, has recently become popular around the world, threatening the popularity, popularity of Battlegrounds. That was a great hit in the in the global game market last year. When Fortnite was first launched, the game only had the Save the World mode at which gamers build walls and defend it. But in September, the firm added free-to-play Battle Royale portion into the game, provoking plagiarism controversy and allegations that it copied Battlegrounds items and user interface, aka UI. When the controversy flared in September, Bluehole said in a statement that the firm was mulling ways on how to respond to the claims that core elements in the UI of Battle Royale mode of Fortnite seems to be similar to those of of Battlegrounds. The Korean firm added that it was regrettable that Epic Games, which was a partner of Bluehole, had released a similar game. Battlegrounds, a survival shooter reminiscent of the Japanese film Battle Royale, was released in March last year to early access the largest Steam... Reminiscent is being cute. Yes. <laughs> the largest game platform, or Steam, the largest game platform. Since its release, more than 30, 40 million copies of the video game has been sold on Steam as of April. Over 4 million copies on, of the console version, which released last December, have also been sold. The Korean game has received various awards and outside the country, in and outside the country, and its mobile version, released May 16th, continues popularity. Epic Games has also enjoyed a rising popularity of Fortnite, which has attracted over more than 40 million users around the globe. Epic Games is currently preparing to make a foray into the Korean market in cooperation with Neo Neowitz Games as the two firms signed an agreement in January to release Fortnite in a so-called PC rooms here within the second quarter. So a couple things. They here. don't say what they're suing over. Yeah, number one. UI, I guess, is the big one. Well, by UI, what they mean, essentially, is the fact that you drop out of a plane and that you there's a, a point marker and that the the lightning or whatever closes in on you. I think that's the only UI elements they can really claim. I don't think there's any actual, like, I mean, the, there's nothing, like, uh, assets-wise that's even remotely art similar. style's different. Yeah. Uh, so they must be talking about, like, those types of game elements when it comes to, like, how you actually play the game. But at the same time, first start, okay, Battle Royale, um, or Battlegrounds, you don't own Battle Royale. The first thing to do Battle Royale was the movie Battle Royale, which is why they call it Battle Royale mode. Um, Hunger Games ripped that shit off, and the guys that made Battle Royale didn't sue them. Uh, you don't have the patent for a Battle Royale game. You're not the only company in the world that can make Battle Royale games. This is almost like GTA trying to sue Saints Row. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's like... You don't own sandbox games. I mean, yes, you did it first, and you did it pretty damn good, but you don't own them. Um, and it's it just reeks of jealousy at this point. Well, that, that you know so, I, mean? Like, I mean, same thing you're saying here. It reminds me of like if Nintendo had sued uh, whatever for, or like Mario Kart and Diddy Kong Racing. Yeah. Like, granted, those are both Nintendo IPs and properties. Like, like Crash. But crash racing, crash racing yeah. Yeah, yeah. Prime example is crash racing versus like Mario Kart. Yeah, like you don't own, you don't own kart racing. You don't own a genre. You can have Barbie kart racing. Yeah. Like it's stupid. It's just like it, it a lot of this is obviously because they know that their profits are plummeting. They want to try and put as much of a halt good. on Fortnite as possible. And rather than fixing the mistakes that are making their game bad and unable to contend and the fact that their new map and everything wasn't received very well, they're lashing out. And that's in a sense understandable, but also stupid. Yes. So yeah. I am uh, I'm not surprised they're doing it, but I don't think they're going to get a fucking dime, to be honest. Uh, is that our detail roundup? That is our detail roundup. All right. So we'll see you after this. And then you've got a spotlight on... Omen Sight. Sounds good. So spotlight, open sight, and I'm going to talk a little bit about the the studio behind it. And there, I have a full interview with. Uh, you have extended knowledge of extended this. knowledge. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to go into some stuff that I can say, um, some stuff I can't say. But uh, I have an interview with Malik, one of the founders of Spearhead 
games uh, based out of Montreal. And I'm sure if you're good in post or if I'm good in post or one of us, we'll put the little card up and it'll pop up and you'll see it. Um, or you can just go over to our channel. It's on there as well. And it'll it be, be released the same today. day. Yes, released the same day as this video. Um, but first things first, I'm going to release this, this blurb about Spearhead and then go into a little bit further because Spearhead made a game that I enjoyed. I didn't realize that this game was was the same developer as that game until I got into the game. Uh, Spearhead Games is a Montreal-based independent developer. Yeah, Canada. That's why she's she's on this 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 here uh, podcast. The studio's first title, cooperative action puzzler Tiny Brains, followed the antics of four superpowered lab animals in their quest to escape a mad scientist's nefarious tests. In 2016, Spearhead released Stories: Path of Destinies, the game I played, which saw an ex-pirate of Renardo. Rena- come up with the last minute schemes to stop em- an emperor gone mad. Spearhead Games was founded by industry veterans Malik, I'm sorry Malik, I, I butchered your last name. B- Let me try. Bukaira, Bukaira, B-O-U-K-H-I-R-A. Point it to me. Right here. Yeah, Bukira. Bukira. Game designer on Assassin's Creed 2, Dead Space 3, and a tool, Mera, developed de- development director for the Army of Two franchise. So I actually talked to both of them. Uh, Malik is the one in the interview. I talked to a tool before because Malik is like the guy who does the interviews, but a tool was. There's always like one developer that's comfortable in front of a camera. Well, he was cool talking <laughs> to me. The rest are just like, fuck. Yeah, that. he was cool talking to me. He's just like, I yeah. just want to. He's like, Malik is the guy you want. I was like, fair enough. Um, but I've, I played this game. I finished this game finally. And this game, if you have not played Story Path of Destinies, do it. It's a great game. Um, and it's funny because one of the conversations I had with with uh, Malik near the end was like, he's like, the hardest thing for us, and I think it's an, actually an interview. I can't remember if it was when we stopped recording it before. He goes, one of the hardest things for us is people don't know about our games. Mm. And granted, Stories was the free game, and he's like, when that happened, he goes, I got messages from people on Twitter, like, if I'd known about this, I would have bought it. And I go, that makes me feel good as much as it sucks for you, because that's what we're trying to do on this podcast. Yeah. So that was kind of cool to hear. I told him told him that. But anyways, Omen Sight, the premise for Omen Sight is, I'm going to again read the blurb so you can get the outline that I'll go over kind of my experience with the game. Do it, do it. You are the Harbinger, a skilled warrior who exists outside of time. You have foreseen the annihilation of the land known as Euralia and has been summoned to rewrite its fate. Serve the eyes and the sword of Euralia as you identify characters who have played part in the story of its destruction, like a war general or a powerful sorcerer. Appear alongside these characters in how they choose to spend their time in their final moments. Will you fight them or... Will you fight with them or against them? Mm. By participating in fateful events from different perspectives, you'll learn valuable information about how specific decisions unfold. When these decisions call for battle, make use of the Harbinger sword techniques and creative, co- creatively combine time-slowing spells and other abilities to eliminate threats. Use the power of Omen Sight's weave. Use the power of Omen Sight to weave a new narrative. Pave the way to a brighter future and give the world of Euralia a second chance. This is from Malik, quote, When we released stories, Path of Destinies, in 2016, we were thrilled with the response to the narrative structure. Players told us how they enjoyed manipulating time to collect all the different endings in the game. With Omen Sight, our new original title set in the fresh universe, we're taking the idea a step further with what we like to call a narrative puzzle. With what we like to call the narrative puzzle, we'll extend the diverse characters in Omen Sight, and we can't wait to see how players navigate the intricacies of these characters' actions and the reactions to solve the mystery of Euralia's demise. Patricia Somerset, The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, might have heard that game, and Julian Casey, We Happy Few, are among the talented voice group lending their voices to Omen Sight's characters. Omen Sight has a stellar writing team behind it, including Nadim Buk- Bukhara, which is... Um, Malik's brother. Bakira. Bakira, sorry. Stories Path of Destinies and Janice Davis, who I actually met at Wizard World a couple years ago. Uh, the whole the Holder's Dominion with Chris Alvin Alv Avalone, Fallout New Vegas, Torment Tides of Numeria and Prey assisting with the script. Wow. So they had some talent behind this. Some heavy hitters. So the way this game is, and like you like it said there, the, the premise of the game is this godless priestess dies and you see the end of the world. Uh, the, the big baddie is known as Vodin. And all you really know about him is he's some demon. He's in the game, he's symbolized as a snake, but he's not. He's just, that's just what they use kind of for the symbol of evil, which is what a lot of things do. How did you deal with that? It's, it's cartoony. It's like a wispy. 
thing. Oh, okay. It's more, it wasn't it wasn't like realistic looking, so it wasn't too bad. <laughs> I was hoping I wasn't gonna have to fight a snake at the end though. At the end of the game, um, I was like, please don't, because they talk about how you can take different forms and all this kind of stuff. So if he was in that form, because I from the artwork, I was like, if it's a snake, this is gonna suck. <laughs> uh, he was not spoilers, um, but he wasn't a different form that you could fight. So the game sets out and you have multiple different characters, like it said. So you you start out and you go to what's called the Tree of Life and you meet this witch. And this witch kind of tells you, hey, this is what's going on. You can then, there's statues that you can walk up to and it replays. You're basically playing the same day every time you start a, an event. Okay. So it, it has four, four times in the day. You have morning, afternoon, evening, and then the end of the world. And based on those events, you then... <laughs> That's escalated quickly. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know it's coming, yeah. it says. But based on those events, you learn information. So you go through and you meet these different characters. So the first one I met was Draga. She's the she's a, a general in basic, there's, there's a couple things happening. One, there's a war going on between the Rhodesians, which is uh, kind of like a, a rat mouse uh, species. Good, good title for them. Yeah, Rhodesians. Yeah. And then you have the, uh, I can't think of the other the other faction's name right now, but it's the one Draga's with. The they're more human esque people that you're fighting with, and they're they're at war, and that's kind of going on in the background of all of this going on. So I started with her, kind of got some information, went through, go back, and then the witch is like, "Oh, you should talk to Ludimir," and you learn about Ludimir and kind of his story. And again, I don't want to give away. Is there a lot of anthropomorphic creatures in? Yes, the game? Okay. they all are. It seems to be like a staple for the studio. Yes, yeah. and I love it. They do it really well. The voice acting is spot on. As you know, I'm a huge. Uh, VO fan, and if it's done wrong or done poorly, I don't I'm not I don't like the game. It can ruin it. I was concerned because when I first loaded up the game, it was one of those ones where the character popped up and you see the text, but then they started talking. It's like thank yeah. you because I hate reading. I hate that kind of stuff. Not that I hate reading. It is if I'm I mean, in a game, you're I, not the biggest reader. No, fan. but if I'm in a, but if I'm in a game, I want the the game to do the work for me and right, when right. it comes to narrative and have me do the gameplay it just, work. It just feels like a more quality product. Yes, good, it feels you know. polished. Yeah. So you have you have Draga, you have Ludomir, you have Radica, who's my favorite character in the whole game. Is it a um, she is. And one of the cool things, and this is slight spoiler, so skip ahead like 30 seconds, you don't know if she's good or evil mm. in, this whole, in the whole game. And one of the things, because she's a rat, you don't know if she's for you, against you, or for herself. Mm. And one of the major plot twists involves involves her, and I'm excited to kind of see. I was excited to kind of see how that all played out. And it was funny because when I interviewed Malik, I was he goes to work because he didn't want to tell me details about the game at the end because he there's DLC coming. He's confirmed that they are doing it's going to be a free DLC patch, assuming all goes right, for a character that was already in the game. But he didn't want to tell me what those details of the DLC was because he wanted me to finish the game because the end of the game influences what happens. For the DLC. For that DLC. Gotcha. Um, so it's funny. He goes, so where are you at in the game? I go, I'm about to open the purple door to the tree. And his reaction was priceless. He goes, your world's about to get turned the fuck upside down <laughs> or something like that. Or the game's going to turn completely on its head or something something like that. I was just like, really? He's like, yeah. You thought there was plot twist now. Just wait till that moment happens. I'm like, okay. Um, which was cool because it, it, did, it did change a lot of things. But up to that point, the, the plot twists that had happened were surprising but not once you realized it because it's a puzzle changing. game yeah yeah well they were but you learn information to make you understand why you're doing what you're doing gotcha. so one of the one of the big the big things you learn about early on in the game is ludomir the he's a giant bear with missing eye and there's the the godless priestess was Vera, who's the who's the queen, I guess, is the best way to put it. And Vera and Ludomir are brother and sister, which then obviously added a different dynamic to when they interact with each other, the information they know about each other. So it's really it's really, really interesting kind of seeing that come out. And then obviously with Radica, she's she's got her own thing going on and one of the first fights I went into was her possessed by Vodin. So my first interaction with Radica was her being evil. So that's why I was like, I don't know if you're good, evil, or what. And then you eventually learn she will help you in certain situations, go against you. In terms of the fighting, what? because from someone that knows nothing about this game, yeah. like what is the combat? Like, So the combat is smooth, button-based, uh, time-slowing mechanics. So the way, I would, the way I would preface or say it is it reminds me a lot of like 
Dark Souls combos with Batman fighting aesthetics. Okay. So it feels a lot like the Batman Arkham series when it comes to just like the flips and flow between enemies. Right. Um, one of the things that I absolutely love in this game that did it well is at first square is like your normal slash and you're just slashing slash and you get through everybody but as time goes on the enemies get tougher you get more of them and you've got to figure out what you need to do there's environmental things that come in so like at some levels have uh exploding barrels like every other game has are they red yeah they have pillars you can knock down they have plungers you can push to shoot fire all this kind of stuff happens and one of the things that like i said the game does really well is you'll have this chaotic moment of like you'll be in the middle of battle and you'll have i'll be going to slashing and dodging dodging super important obviously but it'll slow down time when you dodge to kind mm. of regroup but there's one move that you get i think it's the second move you get in the game where it's attached to r1 where it slows down time so you put your staff or your your i don't it's a sword staff thing i don't they never say what it is it's just a long piece of light it looks like put it in the ground and everything around you in a bubble freezes so you have a strategy thing of like, okay, pause. This person over here, the the heavy guy is 50% health, but he has a shield up. The guy over here is 100% health, doesn't have a shield. The guy behind me has got a thing he's throwing at me. This guy over here is throwing grenades, whatever it may be. And you've got to figure out kind how of How long who, does that last? It depends on how much you've leveled it up. Oh, uh, okay. So um, from my experience, it was, it was about five to seven seconds so but i wasn't counting yes situation yes and i loved it and you can also level things up as you go along to like the cooldown will be slower that kind of thing so i i, I use that mechanic more than anything else in the game outside so it's of almost square. like a little rpg light in the yeah, game it's, like a dragon dragon's age or something like that and the and the way they do it is so the in the in the the tree the life the tree of life area where the witch is that tells you kind of the story and kind of tells you where to go the first thing on the far left is you have uh you pick up crystals throughout the your time which is your currency essentially you trade those in for upgrading your powers that you have so whether that's your companions have attacks you can upgrade their attacks for damage uh for their respawn time to or cooldown time make it sl lower uh to be able to defend, be more robust, that kind of stuff. And do you pick up more companions as you're playing? Do it's you the same. It's the same four that go on. So okay. it's based do on the story you you're doing. Start with them. Or? No, it's based on the story you're doing. Oh, okay. So when you go back, say I go back and I play, I choose to play Draga's point of view. She is my companion. Oh, okay. When I go, you do pick some up as you go along that aren't unlocked, unlocked at the beginning, and I'm not going to say who those are. But you play Draga, or you'll play Ludimir, or you'll play Radica, and those are your companions for that time. And each one has their own different move set that they do. So like Radica. So that keeps it interesting. Yeah. So Radica. Because move set makes you move quicker. Okay. So you can go between enemies. Ludomir, which I love, was just fucking pound the ground and destroy anything around him. So I used him a lot for environmental things. So there's these pillars in the games that if you smash the ground, they'll fall down and hit enemies on the head. Uh, one of the trophies is actually to kill four enemies with one pillar, which huh. I did not do. Um, but back in the Tree of Life, you have that, and then you have these crystals that you pick up from barrels and killing enemies and all this kind of stuff. They're, they're like kind of like bright dust style things it's like they're little glowing orbs that you pick up and those are your level ups so the currency is used to upgrade the bright dust stuff is used to level you up and you have this pillar that you meditate at and once it gets all the way top you unlock something new yeah. you unlock something new and each time it's a good progression of because I, I at first I, I explored a lot of the world but then you start at near the end you you know where you're going and you're so getting towards the tree it. of life is your hub universe but you have that's individual... that's the reset the tree of life is the hub is the reset to everything okay so it's where you start back and Can that's where you, you choose go, to go back into like earlier sections yes okay so you replay the same areas constantly and but the way it works different times of day yes. or whatever yep so the way it works is based on who you who you choose so Here's a prime example. I played Ludomir, and there's there's also various keys to use and unlock worlds to get to new areas in that, which I really liked because it made it not feel as boring. It's like, oh, I have this whole new place to explore. So the first time I played as Ludomir, I was supposed to actually finish this quest to get a thing to unlock another door. I didn't do that because I already had a I had a crest from uh, Draga to unlock a door over here. So I went through that door to see where that went and ended up. But later in the game, I need to go back to play Ludomir to get that. His so you you kind of learn. And what's really cool with the the difficulty is the difficulty I played on the easiest one just because I want to get through the story. They have the story and then they give you hints to what you need to do. They have one where the combat's harder, but the story's given hints. There's one where the combat's easier, but the story, you've got to figure it out on your own. And there's one that's true Harbinger, which is you you have no hints, combat's tough, 
best of luck. Yeah. Yeah. So I, re- I really like that, uh, the way they, they did that. And then on the far right of the Tree of Life is your investigation orb. So as you go along, you learn different information from people based on the events that happened. And you put those pieces together to figure out what happened in the world to solve. So you're a detective at the same yeah, time. Yeah, to solve what happened at the very end of the game. Um, the big kind of, and where the name comes from, Omen Sight, the big kind of gameplay that changes everything. And when I first got it, it makes sense. There's three of these total. But the Omen Sight is kind of like a vision. So you talk to somebody, you see something happen. So whether that's, again, I don't want to give anything, but say, for example, that's somebody stealing somebody. That's going to change that person's feeling towards you if they know that information. Right. If, I, if, I, if I come in and I just take your wife and you're like, what the hell happened? But I come back and say, hey, we were, we were going to the gym. That gives you more context to it. Gosh, Things like you that. You only see a portion of what truly happened, and it might be something completely out of context. And, and based on the people's experiences and how you how you, you use that, you like it says, you can either fight or fight with or against them. So when you get to like a boss fight, and I use the word boss loosely, um, when you get to the boss fight, you have the option of either omen sight or fighting, and. The game will let you know kind of at the end what it wanted you to do, especially if you're on the, on the easier modes. But if I, like when I went in and I, I decided to fight somebody, the game was like, hey, that was cool that you got that information and I, ooh, I learned something about it. But it, the game was like, we need to get something else from this person. So I, I was like, okay, instead of fighting Chastised them, you. Give, me the, yeah. give, give them the omen sight and maybe you'll get the answer back. So really fun game. I absolutely enjoyed my time in it. I've, I want to say it's probably six to ten hours depending on it's decent length d- for an indie. depending on give difficulty and all that kind of stuff but and it has some replay value kind of it has replay value while you're playing right i think once you're done like i have almost 100 percent of the game okay. i'm probably gonna go back and do the is there multiple endings or no there's one ending okay. but there's multiple ways to get to the ending okay so the the ending is is the same either way, um, and I don't want to say what the ending is. The fucking ending, though, was completely turned... Like, again, the way this game did story and kind of the plot twists was really cool. So there was one moment, and again, I'll, I'll, I'll be vague with it, but there's one moment where you're going along to do something, and you talk to one companion, they say one thing, you talk to another companion, you kind of got to balance out which one you're going to side with. And when I sided with person A, person B got mad at me. When I went back to person B, they didn't like that. And then when I got to the end of the game where kind of the big boss fight was about to happen, I got I got there and like my powers were stripped. And I was like, what do I do now? Like there's enemies around. How do I what how do I combat this? And I'm again I'm not gonna give away kind of what happens there, but it was really, really interesting. The game kind of was like okay. Some of the choices you made really do affect you. Are, you are powerful, but now they're gone. Yeah. So that was that was fun. That was an interesting experience. <laughs> awesome. But Omen Sight, uh, I believe it is twenty dollars on PSN. I'm gonna double check that real quick. I mean, judging from the past it's history PC. of uh, Stories Path of Destiny, which did particularly well, especially critically, I think um, you know this is definitely worth a look for folks. And you seem to really enjoy it. Oh, I remember yeah. you texting me after you finished it, like, "Dude, this game is so fucking amazing." And you only tend to do that once in a while, so I, yeah. I know that you. Uh, you Toy bucks it. on PSN, uh, and it's on PC as well. It's not on Xbox, so it's a P- PlayStation console exclusive, as they call it. Um, but they are. Again, nothing confirmed, but they are working on on a switch. Uh, there, as he put it, we are we are looking in to switch, but it's not anywhere close. Yeah, it's not anywhere tough not to crack if you don't have the dev kit and that kind of stuff. Yeah. But, uh, awesome. So that's the spotlight for Omen Sight. And if you want to see more or learn more about Omen Sight, then uh, coming up today, you can keep your eyes on the channel and you'll see Keegan's full interview. How long was it? It's about 50 minutes okay, well, total. Almost an hour um, or, uh, interviewing Malik. Or uh, if you want to see me play the game, if you head over to twitch.tv slash level2gamersstl, yeah, you, you can see me play. The, the whole game is streamed, so the whole game is there. My decisions as I went along were there. So Awesome. So that's why I have to go to get footage for the... Yeah. Okay, good. Um, so that's your spotlight for the week. We'll take a short break and then we'll be right back with your question. So, question. Question. We talked about uh, good old battle royales earlier with uh, both H1Z1 being huge and PUBG 
suing another battle royale, Fortnite. Hmm. And this question, I'm sure, has been posed on the internet many a times in many a circles. But, but my question, here. my question is, do you think battle royale is here to stay, or is it just a cash grab? Because Call of Duty announced one. You have H1Z1 coming to console. You have PUBG. You have Fortnite. Doesn't Battlefield Five have one? I mean, I'm. Feel like uh, everybody no, Call of Duty definitely has one. Battlefield Five, I'm not so sure. Okay, I know they. I don't follow this trailer. I Rec know. Room has one now. Yeah. <laughs> the VR game Rec Room has Rec Royale, which I think. I think that is more just like a tongue in cheek than anything. Yeah, it's super tongue in cheek. It's it's done almost exactly like uh, PUBG. Um, but yeah, I yeah, which by the way, we should fucking play that. But um, I, it's a t it's a tough one. I think people are kind of already getting sick of it, to be honest. And I think it's kind of it's almost like an industry joke at this point that every game has is this gonna get a battle, battle royale mode. Royale mode. Um, I'm not particularly mad about it because the gameplay mode itself of a battle royale of having like a hundred people that have to pick each other off until there's only one one standing is a great dynamic it's it's such an interesting kind of um way to play a game but also the level of satisfaction of getting a number one mm -hmm. knowing getting that, that chicken dinner yeah or even if you didn't royale. take out more than six people in your journey to get there but just like you ducking hit in the, and you dodging, hit in the bush yeah you hit says in the, bush. the guy who yelled at me for hiding in a house during PUBG. Yeah, i like to get more kills but you know, it's. Um, I, I think that there's this kind of weird level of, level of satisfaction that is above what you would normally get playing, like just winning a match of Call of Duty or Overwatch mm -hmm. or whatever, because you know that there was like so many people there to begin with, and you made it all. You whittled yourself down to the the final few, and then and then took it. Um, but I do think that there will be fatigue for it. Pretty quickly I, I think there I, already is i think there's a little bit of it right now i mean if you think about it like as actually like what's on the shelf right now you're really only looking at uh the four that you mentioned uh the five or so that you mentioned PUBG, we Fortnite. will have you know more with call of duty and um, which i think everyone looked at call of duty and yawned when they said that but um i, I fully expect black ops to fail miserably by the way but i think um i think there are more interesting ways you can tackle that genre that have not been seen because almost every battle royale game right now is a gun based third person game um call of duty doing it with fps is definitely interesting mm -hmm. i i would be interested to see how that plays out and i know that you can do that in PUBG, but they do it terribly like the third the the, the first person in PUBG is just not worth doing at all um but the i think if you take into account the idea of doing it like with melee only like just like swords like feudal mm -hmm. japan battle royale that would be pretty fun you know um or even like uh just coming soon for honor battle royale yeah <laughs> right like that type of thing i think would be kind of neat uh to see if they, there is definitely a couple twists left in the tail of it that could uh potentially make for some interesting gameplay but i do think that in general if they start just like throwing every title into the royale thing then it's gonna get real real old real quick i don't think we're there yet but it's definitely pushing the boundaries see i'm, I'm done with battle royales at this point like Already? i have like fortnite is the one that i'm like i'm gonna unless Unless there's one that comes along that uses that does something completely different or has this weird quirky mechanic that somebody else doesn't have, mm. I feel like right now everything we have is a clone. Mm. And I think I said it earlier. I feel like Fortnite and PUBG are not that similar, but I feel like H1Z1 and PUBG are similar, especially when you go to the for the realism look. Like, granted, H1Z1 has zombies, but like, is that really meaning? You got to fight NPCs along with real people. Like, I don't. I think that's dumb because it makes it that much tougher. Um, the reason I like Fortnite it is makes it tougher for everyone. Though. Yeah, it's not just you. yes, but I, I think it's dumb because you could be fighting this guy over here, and then all of a sudden a zombie attacks you. You're shooting a zombie, and all of a sudden a guy attacks. Such I, that's why post-apocalyptic zombie killing life. That's why I didn't like Dark Zone and Division. You know how much I loved the Division, but right. I hated where I'd be fighting an NPC, and all of a sudden a human would come up and just shoot me in the back. And I was like, well, that's cool. Yeah, I wasn't even messing with you. Frustrating. But, yeah. So I I like Fortnite because the building mechanics, as you know, I'm I'm a big crafting fan, and I think. Uh, Fortnite needs to expand. I think right now, more maps. and it's easy. It's easy to say because they're the top dog. But I think Fortnite, if as long as they don't screw it up, they've got this. Mm. And I don't think anybody's gonna dethrone them. So why make another? Why make another one that's not gonna be as 
I was never a fan of the crafting aspect of Fortnite, and I know that's a big part of the gameplay loop, and I understand that people that are good at the crafting, like, are really good at the crafting. I watched some FaZe uh, clan mm -hmm. playing the other day, and oh my god, dude, like, mm -hmm. it's insane how quickly they can build, like, up to the heavens, like, just while getting shot at, and then, like, kill the people below them by just taking out their own structure, and they're so fast with it, and I just, my reflexes are war way too old to mm -hmm. deal with that, so I always, that's why I always leaned more towards PUBG because I like the idea of root rooting around in old houses and finding what you can and then like hiding in bushes and like that's kind of like the ar almost like army-ish style of gameplay always I preferred over the but the uh, downside of that is like PUBG nature. you never know where somebody's coming from they literally could drop on your head true but and that's then also, part and parcel of like the what you're getting yourself into you yeah. know what I mean but that's why I like it because you if never you, know if you're out in the open in PUBG against one other person it's you and them and your aim that's mm -hmm. it if you're out in the open with someone in Fortnite it's who can build a fucking fort fastest <laughs> and hide mm -hmm. behind it you know what I mean um, so the, I mean this, you know there's the, both games have their merits I, uh, Fortnite is obviously at this point in time in the lead as far as like consistent player base and that kind of stuff obviously it doesn't help right now that uh, A it's free and B it has big names like you know Drake was playing it the other day or whatever um, Ninja well, this I, was, that was about a month ago but yeah. Yeah, well yeah you know what I mean it's, well, a month ago was what <laughs> last time we recorded um but yeah i i think um i think there's more that can be told in that genre style because the genre style is interesting i just don't want every shooter to become that uh yeah I, i'm with you on my that. concern i i don't want i don't mind i don't mind it being an included mode necessarily but i don't want them all to just just be that like black ops for example is dropping single player to focus on multiplayer mm -hmm. and battle royale is a part of their multiplayer mm -hmm. so clearly there's a lot of effort that gets put into that and i understand that but if you like if you make it like uh, like a team deathmatch right so like you have a an fps play uh any game F any fps game and you have your your typical list of maps or map styles which are going to be like team uh, deathmatch, uh, capture the flag domination, mm -hmm. you know like, you know, controlling an area or whatever and there's always going to be like those because those are just like standard multiplayer shooty things Thanks, if you Halo. make it a part of that if you just like have battle royale mode like that's fine like but if you make every game just battle royale the problem with that yes, is, is problem. battle royale usually has to have its own map because yeah. of the size yeah which is definitely it's definitely an endeavor to put in but there's so many multiplayer only games coming out uh you know i don't think it's undoable especially with the new technology that we're kind of pushing up against now um i don't think we're 100 percent there yet we're become something that's in every game as a game mode but it's definitely like i would prefer to see it like that than to see it as the soul game mm -hmm. for these things like um you know we have a lot more of these more kind of interesting melee based games coming out soon they have like ghosts of um is it sunashima or something that's coming out for playstation uh which is a i, I know what you're talking about i can't remember the name yeah of it. it's a completely feel japan samurai sword based uh game we had for honor like you mentioned earlier um you know that type of thing like if you can rope it into that style i think it would be interesting um or even if they just like took some twists on it and had it like so there was some parkour mixed in tony hawk like, battle paintball. royale yeah why not you know some some super goofy stuff but as far as like give me tony hawk game that works first yeah as far as all the you know the the current sort of third person shooter map lightning closes in on you you, you got to get to the circle that stuff like it's uh it is getting a little dry yeah yeah yep there you so go. what do you guys think do you think uh battle royale is here to stay or do you think it's cash grab i my my honest opinion is i think we're gonna get an influx and it's gonna eventually just weed itself down to the top three or four that are gonna hang around yeah that's usually what happens of the fittest. and i think fortnite is already Quite, which is you know apt for battle royale <laughs> is that... i think i think fortnite's gonna be one that stays um, obviously, Black Ops is going to be determined to see how well that goes. I think if anybody has the ability to do it well, it would be Call of Duty. Because I, I the... think if not Treyarch did it, it would be good. But Treyarch just consistently ruined Call of Duty. I don't play Call of Duty, so I don't. Yeah. But I mean, World War Two was the single best Call of Duty to come out in years, and then when they did Black Ops, it was all fucking jetpacks and stupid shit again. And I'm just like, did you learn but... nothing? Just because you don't like it doesn't mean there aren't people that do. No, the, the that's why. That's why. That's why base. Titanfall is doing well. They come. Yep. Yeah, well, Titanfall is a different game. The people that wanted to play Call of Duty wanted to play Call of Duty, not Titanfall. 
Yes, but that's why they do the cyclical thing. So you still have your Call of Duty game. It's not they're not taking it away from you. No, but I just have to wait every two years instead of one year because Treyarch. So wait, so wait, you're saying games. you want annual annualized Call of Duty games? Is I, that what you just said? They are annualized. I know, but you want an annualized I World War II Call of Duty. I to do what they used to do, which was to release an annual game that matched the similar aesthetic to what. Because I don't want annualized Call of Duty games. Do you yeah. remember World at War? Yeah, I hated it. That was Treyarch. Hated it. You but know, I hated it. That was it? better. That was like a better style than. No, I hated it. The stupid I sold it to my brother for Army of One or something. Wow. Or traded because I hated that, it. Dude. That was a good game. No, that game sucked. That so. game was horrible. I respectfully disagree. I yeah, because you're wrong. <laughs> There's no being wrong with no, your opinion wrong. of a game. No, God. you're wrong. Anyways, this has been Indie Please Add Details, our weekly dip in the in, in the world of indie games and indie developers, where we discuss the news and our indie excursions throughout the week. Top it all off with topic of discussion, then you can join down in the comments below. You can listen to us on your favorite podcast services. Apple Podcast, Google Play, Stitcher, SoundCloud, all those other places that you can find. Or you can see our lovely faces at level2gamers.com, which is our YouTube, where we have additional reviews, gameplay footage, other things, interviews with, like I said, Malik from uh, from Spearhead is going up so go We're check that be out. We're trying to do more of those by yes. the way. Now that was the that so that was the the test run as long as that went well i can we can easily do more it's way yeah. it's super simple the way our setup is i don't give away the the secret sauce but it actually was quite simple the way to get it done um or you can continue discussion online but off air at love two gamers stl on twitter or discord link in the description my name's keegan that's tom this has been indie please that details episode 28 hope you like the new layout hope you guys uh feedback yeah if you guys feedback. have any questions or give feedback us, let us know us. Uh, but i'm glad to be back it's been it's been a month over a month. <laughs> it's been a month. It's been a month. Yeah, <laughs> I my car my car's still broken technically because I got fun fact. Uh, my car got an accident. My car got yeah. First my car thing. got hit. So outside of my car breaking, and then I got into an accident. But the other person's insurance company is going to pay the whole thing. Welcome so it's to our life. But anyways, this has been Indy. Please add details up to twenty eight. Thank you guys so much for watching. And as always, welcome, welcome to, to the, the second, second level. level. Bye. Bye.